Hi, this is Tim from Total Lockout. Put together this little video for you today which explains some of the difficulties and challenges of locking ball valves with lockout tag out devices. Hope you enjoy the video. In this video we're going to focus on this style of locking device for valves. Uh, this style of locking device was originally designed and manufactured by a Canadian company called Archon Safety. Uh, that evolved into North Safety, who were later taken over by Honeywell. Um, as far as I know now, you can no longer buy uh, this product under that name brand. Although over the years, um, 20, 30 years or more, this uh, product, this style of product has been extensively copied by a number of different manufacturers from India and China. And um, it's still highly in demand. Um, around the world this style of locking device so uh, readily available um, originally they went under the part numbers BSO1, BSO2, BSO3 and BSO4 uh, depending which manufacturer you source those from they may come under a different uh, product name sorry a product code this one here is just worth pointing out this is the BSO4 this is designed for butterfly valves um, it's just here for reference. I'm not actually going to be featuring this uh, this locking device in this video So these locking devices are designed to smith uh, to uh, fit on small diameter valves much like the ones you see here We've got a uh, half inch three quarter inch and one inch lever operated ball valves interesting to note that this style of it's common that this style of ball valve today comes with its own integral locking device which you can see here it's a little uh, sliding sleeve when it drops down into this position here this this tab engages in the the top the iso top of the valve uh, and, and locks it stops the valve from being able to turn uh, and by putting a padlock through the hole here you can lock that sleeve in a down position the tab stays engaged and then of course you can't turn the valve lever once the padlock's removed, you can slide this, this tab up and just operate the valve in the normal way here, see, open. And then once open, you can uh, again lock it, the, the tab drops down, and once again you can put the padlock through, uh, through the padlock hole here. And in terms of integrity and locking, that's about as good as you can get. Um, this, this, this concept of, of having an integral locking device of this nature is very, very good. It achieves a good locking function far superior than what you can uh, achieve with any aftermarket add-on uh, locking device like we see here. Having said that, from one manufacturer to another, the shape and envelope dimensions and the gen general configuration of the valve may change considerably. You see valves that are flat rather than cranked, uh, sorry, valve levers that are flat rather than cranked. You can see valve levers that are a piece of round bar um, and all those types of changes introduces difficulty when using an aftermarket locking device like what we see here. Okay so um, I'm going to look at the first two here together BSO1 and BSO2 just for a moment I'm going to take out this tab here which I'll explain in a moment. You can see that the basic dimensions of this device are the same with the exception of the length the overall length here. Uh, the difference between this one and this one means that this one will accommodate a longer lever. In terms of the actual valve size, um, there's not, in terms of what it will actually fit onto, there's not a lot of difference. And therein lies part of the problem. The manufacturers claim that these devices will fit a certain size range of valve, but as we're going to demonstrate here, that's rarely the case. Now, fitting the uh, locking device onto the valve, first of all, involves separating the two halves. And uh, you can see that this part here lowers onto the lever of the valve and the lever becomes encapsulated in this groove here. Now that's on the half inch valve. On the one inch valve, the width of the lever, including this rubberized uh, sleeve handle, it becomes too tight and it won't fit. And similarly, the forks here 
struggle to engage on a fixed part of the body of the valve. So straight away you're seeing you've got poor integrity of fit of the locking device on the valve. That's not really a criticism of the locking device itself, it's more it's recognizing the fact that the, the design features of the top of the valve varying can become troublesome for fitting the locking device. It's also worth noting here that we've got this little removable sleeve. When you take out the sleeve it increases the, the pocket size, the area inside here, so again that will make that um, it will make it easier to accommodate the valve sleeve. Now once that's on there like that, the other half of the, of the device can slide down into place like that. You put your padlock through one of these holes here and you've actually got a fairly decent fit of that locking device on that valve. The valve's currently in the open position here. If we take the device off, turn the device to close, that's where this component comes into play. Okay, so now what we do is we reinstate this tongue component in the device here, like that, lower it back onto the valve, put the other half of the handle on, and what you see now is that the tongue is right down the side body of the valve, making it almost impossible to turn that lever on that valve. When locking the valve in the open position, you have to discard this piece. So, there we go. That's the BSO1 and the BSO2. That tongue component is transferable between the two sizes. The last one here is the BSO3. You can see it's much larger. Again, on manufacturer specifications, it might claim that this device will fit uh, up to an 8-inch uh, lever-operated ball valve. Well, people who know their valves will understand that um, once a valve gets above 6 inches in diameter, it often has a gearbox fitted to it. So then it will become um, a locking device that you need for a wheel. The gearbox tends to have a wheel on it. So that becomes uh, unsuitable for valves of that nature. So there you have it, BSO1, BSO2, BSO3, some of the difficulties fitting these devices to these valves. If you're unsure about whether or not the locking device is going to fit on your valve, take these measurements, the width of the handle, the thickness of the handle, and then check with the dimensions of this device on the website, totallockout.com, under the valve lockout section and it'll actually show you the dimensions of this, of this aperture here that the lever will fit into. So, there you have it, a little look at uh, the locking devices for ball valves. If you've got any questions about locking any kind of valve, uh, we know our way around valves pretty well, we certainly know our way around locking devices for valves, so uh, we'd be happy to help you. Get in touch.